Back at the 843 Bobcat today, we're gonna take care of some preventative maintenance before we put her to work. First on the order is we have a new air filter. It has the inner and outer element. We're gonna replace that. This is the air cleaner housing. My unit's actually missing the outer cover. This is the inner element. It's really nasty. Here's the old outer element. The new kit came with both the outer and the inner element. First order of business is to clean the housing out. I used a little WD-40, sprayed it in there to get all the loose dirt out of the rag. Next step is to slide in the new inner element. Came with the new washer has a gasket material on the back side of it old wing that looks like it's threaded into the end of this old filter or just stuck in there And has a little raised shoulder. That wash is conical. I think it helps center this inner filter element. Also it came with a new outer plastic washer. Now we can breathe some fresh air. So I got this awesome grease gun, which never works. I'm gonna throw it in the garbage can as soon as I get a new one. It's pistol grip. Thought I was doing something good by buying the fancier pistol grip unit. Brand name, OEM Industrial. Just what they had available at Rule King. And every time I go to use it, never works has a burper here it even has a push button burper so you can burp the grease gun there's the burper screw there's the push button so i try that it never works so i unthread it and the pistons all the way at the end so every time you leave it lay on the floor on its side somehow the oil all or the grease all gets on the wrong side of the the uh piston I think this thing's junk. I need to throw it away. Thinking about a lock and lube. What do you think? Let me know. We're going to go through and grease all the pivot pins. On. Starting at the back, we have the main lift arm ones. Go ahead and grease those. Make sure you wipe them off before you attempt to grease them. Yeah, I don't think it took any of that grease. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think that one's taken either. I'm gonna take a pick to try to clear out the old dried hardened grease in there. Okay, you may not have been able to see it, but there's actually a hole in there that had dried hardened grease and rust in it from never being greased. So we got it free. You can see the pen now. I'm gonna put the greaser back in and try to pump some grease in her.
First time that's taken grease in probably years. It actually worked. Okay, out on the bobtack tilt on, uh, pins. This lower pin, I couldn't get it to take grease. So I removed the grease cert and used my little nipple assembly and actually was able to get it to work like this. So I kept pumping it until we got grease coming out on the insides of the pen. So that worked. We're gonna have to get some new grease certs for these. I'm gonna try the same thing on the other side. Okay, we got everything greased as good as we can. I'm just going to go around the unit and point out the uh, grease certs that we hit. So starting in the back, you have your main lift arm, one here, one here. We had to remove those because of dried hardened grease inside there. Clean them out and put them back in and you can see the grease coming out there on the side so that's a good sign. Moving over to the left side. You have the other lift arm inside this hole. There's a grease cert. That one took grease, no problem. Have a grease cert here. The grease cert here. Here, we took those out because they wouldn't take any grease and use the nozzle. I have a grease cert here and then the same on this side you have one on this lift arm down here in this hole and that should complete all the uh, grease points that I know of I'll take you back to show you a damaged section of the front uh, tool attach plate may have seen it in another video someone obviously made their own homemade repair here this is all messed up and I tried to grease it here but all the grease is coming out uh, because it's all worn out and needs a uh, needs repaired so watch it that's not good she's all loosey-goosey we're gonna have to do something different there in the future maybe make a new bushing on this side, this side, cut all this garbage out and re-weld it in. Hopefully the cylinder end isn't damaged too badly. We may have to line bore that. And now we're just checking the oil in the chain case. There's a plug that goes here. We removed the plug and we're adding Harvest King 10 W30 uh, oil. We're going to fill it up until it starts coming out of this hole and then throw our plug back in. This isn't the best setup, but it's what I got. Flexible funnel would work better. Alright, I think that does it. Took about 14 quarts. I think I'm gonna buy some more oil and pop off the cover under the brake pedal just to just to see what it looks like in there. Fuel tank, I wanted to get the line that goes into the tank out to check the screen on the bottom to make sure it wasn't plugged. There was a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, you loosen, and then you also had to remove a bolt from this guide. Right here, slide it sideways and it lifts off out of the way. Already took the fuel sending unit out, but I can't. Get the fuel line out because something's on the end. Probably the screen. 
So I'm going to try to reach over inside the fuel sending hole, grab the hose and bring it up through this larger hole and check whatever's on the end or remove it. I have my special tool, the old straightened coat hanger. Let's see what happens with this. Okay, I think we got it. Now if we can just get it up to the hole. This sure doesn't want to come out of there easy. <sighs> doesn't look like it's clogged. This hose is really stiff though. I think we're going to put all new fuel line on it. I think that nut is the homemade weight to make it go down to the bottom. I'm betting this probably had a metal fuel line on it at one point in time. Probably be a little bit better than this. So this is the fuel line that was in the tank. This is 5 16 inch. It's really hard, dried out, old line. Had a hose clamp at the top to set the height in the tank. Went over a steel elbow to go down the side. Another short section of 5 16 inch hose this one's at least flexible with some kind of pipe adapter and I believe it goes up to 3 8 inch ID to that uh, fuel pump they installed so we're gonna try to replace this whole mess with one line I don't have enough 5 16 but uh, I think I have enough 3 8 so we're gonna try to get 3 8 to work auxiliary fuel pump had this guy and then I believe that's a screen extra screen for the pump luckily in my small selection of barb fittings I was able to find a barb fitting that's 3 8 size this is for 5 16 I believe or at least it felt very small on the 3 8 tube so it probably leak air we're going to install this one and start running our hose from here up to the fuel tank. We're actually going to start running the hose through this hole down to the fuel pump and then we'll come back up here and complete the installation on top of the fuel tank. The rubber grommet in there, but it, it was all pushed out previously and worn out. We're going to shove enough of this line through here so we can, oh, uh, short piece. Make sure you get the long piece. We're going to shove enough of this line through here so we can reach in and grab it from the other side. have my 
pipe joint uh, paste. Always want to make sure you knead it, it separates. I keep some of this in my toolbox. It's way easier than Teflon tape. Put just a little dab on the threads. That's way too much. That'll be good enough. Pop our spring tension clamp on. It's our handy dandy special pliers. And done. Uh, all right. You go ahead and replace the other end too. I think we are in luck and have a short piece of that we can use. That way the whole supply system of new lines. Clamps don't work quite as smooth as the other ones. It's a little tight for 5 16th line. It's actually a quarter inch clamp. Still works, it's just a little snug. That beats a hose clamp any day. Looks like we're just going to be barely long enough to make sure it doesn't kink. Yeah, buddy. There we go. I think in the future I'm going to wire this priming pump into a into the key, so when you turn on the glow plugs, it'll automatically use this priming pump. Right now, we still have to use the alligator clip. Well, instead of Putting that big rusty nut on then, I'm going to try to strap some stainless steel wire to the outside of the hose to keep it uh, straight and pointed more towards the bottom of the tank. Here's the end result. I think it's going to work relatively good. All I need to do is get it in the hole. Gonna have to increase the hole size a little bit with the steel line. So just grab the trusty drill and a drill bit and we'll be in business. Yeah, that was a 5 8 See if she's gonna go now.
All right, good to go. New fuel line, check. We installed our fuel line as you just saw, and I just tested the fuel sending unit, excuse me, outside with a multimeter and checked the resistance on full and empty, and it actually changes from about 40 ohms to about 250. So I'm not for sure why that's not hooked up, but we're gonna try to hook that back up in the future. Drop one of these spacers down into the deep abyss. I can't find it. I wanna wrap this up so we can get done. So I'm gonna take a little CPVC, cut it to length. It's not the right solution, but it's better than not having anything at all. And it's fast. If you don't have a pair of these, these are awesome. New spacer. Well, uh, well, that was way more fun than what it needed to be. New fuel line all the way to the tank. Homemade spacer installed. Everything's back the way it was. Let's get to tuck this return line back out of the way. Pick up the tools, and I think the new fuel line's good. Replace this hydraulic filter. I have a new one. Probably should get that done before we use it too much. The replacement filter we got is a Donaldson P164384. It came in the kit off the internet with the air filter and. I feel like there's another filter, but I'm not sure what it is. So, I oh, it's the inner and outer air cleaner. So we got the inner and outer air cleaner and this filter off the kit off the internet. Make ourselves a little slide so all the oil that drains doesn't go back in the engine bay. And my filter wrench is too small. Oh, barely on there. Let's see. Okay. I had to get the plier version. I bought this plier version one time when I needed a new oil filter wrench and I just didn't have mine handy. Wanted to get a different style. It's not the greatest. I'd rather use my band wrench, but uh, it works when you're in a pinch and it, it might be pretty handy for this. Oh yeah, there we go. It's kind of grody. This is the actual filter. Yeah, let's see, you can see it. Donaldson brand. It says Duramax trademarked on it. I'm not sure why it says that. And then there's the number again P164384. It has the big threaded end. It's been on. I'm going to go ahead and fill this, at least as full as I can get, with the pump over here. And then we'll spin her on. Also, check this surface back here. Get all that goo off of there. Okay, got that cleaned off. We got uh, oil added to our filter. Use our handy pump, that thing is awesome.
All right, should be good to go. I'll go ahead and mark the date on it, but the hour meter doesn't work yet. That's on the list of things to fix. So right in the hours right now, won't tell us anything. Ready to rock and roll. All right. We got our new pump and our new five gallon pail of uh, 10W30 oil. We're gonna test it out here and try to fill the hydraulic reservoir on the Bobcat 843. This is the first attempt. Oh, here comes oil. Oh man, that's slick. Looks like we got a little bit of leak here around the top. That's no good. Let's try to tighten that nut up. That seems to be better. She's pretty low. Looks like that ought to do it. Now we're sitting on full. So the only problem I have now is what do I do with the spout? Okay, if I hold it up, maybe it'll drain naturally. I think I'm gonna set it off to the side here and just hook it on the pallet. Right okay. Initial thoughts, she leaks a little here. I just needed that snugged up a little bit. No big deal there. Maybe loose from vibrating around in the box. Otherwise, worked really good. I want to hang, have a spot to hang the spout up so the fluid in the line doesn't leak all over. I wish I had this many years ago. No more funnels. All I need now is a way to meter how much oil I put in with the pump. And then I'd use that for uh, all my oil changes. That's pretty awesome. If you know of any good meters that I could use with this pump to count the amount of fluid or the quartz, drop it down in the comment section below because I'd be interested in uh, adding that to this rig. So initial thoughts, hand pump, awesome. in a driveway, I don't know.
something. Thanks for watching everybody. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave your questions and comments in the section below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button.